Learn about David Todd, Ohio's Civil War governor, whose political transformation shaped the state during a turbulent time. And explore how Youngstown's Open Festival revived downtown nightlife, blending history and modern events in the heart of the city. We'll have those stories and more on today's Daily Buzz. The Daily Buzz is brought to you by 717 Credit Union. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Buzz. I'm Maggie Young. David Todd, son of George Todd, was expected to follow in his father's footsteps and pursue a career in law. However, he broke from his father's political beliefs and charted his own path. David Todd's public career was influenced by mentors and heroes, but his views shifted as the country approached the Civil War. He would eventually serve as Ohio's governor during the war from 1862 to 1864. A new book by Joseph Lambert, Jr., published by Kent State University Press, details Todd's political evolution. Todd sacrificed his political identity to serve the Union, setting aside party allegiances. Lambert became interested in Todd's story while pursuing graduate studies and found that no previous biographies had been written on Todd, prompting him to write his own. The political transformation of David Todd uh, is, is a story of, of uh, one man's political journey uh, in the state of Ohio. David Todd was born in 1805 in Youngstown, Ohio. His father was a prominent political figure who served in various roles, including Ohio State Senator and Ohio Supreme Court Associate Justice. David Todd was, was perhaps uh, uh, the Mahoning Valley's first industrialist, if you will. Uh, uh, he had the courage and the vision to experiment with coal and uh, um, because of his, his success uh, of that product, I mean, he really launched uh, uh, the coal industry in the Mahoning Valley and uh, other, others followed uh, as more seams were, were discovered in the valley, but if it wasn't for David Todd's uh, experiments with it, um, uh, the success of industry may have come, but it may have been a much later time. After the election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860, Todd fully supported the Union, even though he had backed Lincoln's opponent, Stephen Douglas. With the outbreak of the Civil War, Todd became a staunch supporter of the Union cause. He was elected Ohio governor in 1861. Todd was present at Lincoln's Gettysburg Address and declined Lincoln's offer of a cabinet position due to ill health. Todd passed away in 1868 at his home in Briar Hill. Lambert's book highlights Todd's role in navigating Ohio through one of the nation's most turbulent periods, emphasizing his dedication to the Union above partisan politics. The open event aimed to reacquaint Valley residents with downtown Youngstown as a hub for nightlife. Benefiting from favorable weather and live music, the Saturday gathering drew several hundred people by 5 p.m., filling West Federal Street. Two blocks were closed to traffic, with a stage set up for performances. As the evening progressed, more people arrived following the Youngstown State University football game and Youngstown Phantoms hockey game. Restaurants were busy, with diners filling patios at several locations, including West 34, V2, Gringo's, and The Federal. The Federal, a downtown restaurant, participated by selling food from a vendor cart. In addition to Red Wanting Blue, the event featured performances by Howard Howell, Black Rose, and the house band. Elsewhere, the Oaxaca Taco food truck served Mexican dishes owned by local chef Mark Canzanetta, whose downtown restaurant, Casa de Canzanetta, also saw a steady flow of patrons. The downtown open, organized by the city and various sponsors, including 717 Credit Union, was meant to celebrate the reopening of the streets that had been closed due to the pandemic and ongoing road work. Downtown Youngstown had faced setbacks in recent years, including disruptions from street projects and a major explosion at Realty Tower in May. John Demler, CEO of 717 Credit Union, announced a new promotion at the event. The credit union will distribute $250 worth of gift cards usable at downtown businesses for each approved car loan. With the goal of giving out $1 million in total, the promotion, called Forever Youngstown, aims to further support downtown's revitalization efforts. The average cost of a ransom payment following a cyber attack has risen to $569,000, according to Veeam. 
As part of Cybersecurity Awareness Month, Telesolutions Inc., a small business in Youngstown providing voice, data, and IT support, hosted a webinar to help business owners understand the importance of cybersecurity insurance and how to qualify for comprehensive coverage. During the event, Jim Peterson of TechWise highlighted that the cost of cybercrime has reached $8 trillion, nearly double the annual GDP of countries like Germany and Japan. He noted that the rise in password-based cyber attacks, which increased from $3 billion in 2022 to $30 billion in 2023, is largely driven by advancements in AI and automation, making it easier for criminals to launch multiple attacks per second. Peterson explained that 65% of cyber criminals are involved in organized crime, and 32% of cybersecurity threats come from insiders within the organization. On average, cyber attacks can go undetected for 200 days, giving criminals more than six months to compromise a system. And that's all for today's Daily Buzz. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you'd like to dive deeper into any of these stories, links are available in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Maggie Young. Seven Seventeen Credit Union, savings power to give your business an extra boost. Business savings, certificates, and business money market. Seven Seventeen Credit Union, make your money work as hard as you do. Check out our business money market and CD rates at seven seventeen cu dot com slash rates.